What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today, once again, I'm gonna be sharing with you some more of my recent sales. Uh, most of these have come, once again, from Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, but some of them were from eBay. Of course, for a while now, eBay has been slowing down for me, and still, I don't try to post too much on eBay, but whenever I buy video game lots, if I look up the sold comps on eBay for some individual games, sometimes it's worth more if I were to sell it on eBay, even with the fees, and sell it individually on eBay, as opposed to sell it locally in a lot. It just gets me more money if I do it that way. So that's why I still do eBay. I just don't sell too often on it because for the most part, I try to bundle my games and sell them locally. That way I don't have to deal with shipping or eBay fees. But right now we're just gonna get straight into it. Up first is for the uh, game for the Xbox 360, that is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Whenever I buy video game lots, I always look to see what is in it and try to pick out the ones that are more valuable prior to even mess messaging them and trying to work out a deal because you can get great deals for them and sometimes they just don't know what the value of some of the games are in their bundle. So this game here, Spider-Man games are definitely ones that I'm on the lookout for. This one I actually sold on eBay. Now after shipping and eBay fees, it equaled out to be $35 that I made profits on this item, which was awesome. So definitely if you're looking into flipping video games for the PS3 and Xbox 360, certain Spider-Man games are definitely worth it. You just have to obviously look up sold comps for anything that you're buying before listing it on eBay to make sure it's worthwhile. If it's only a $5 game, in my opinion, it's better to List it locally for $5 or a bunch of them for $5 or bundling them where you're going to be trying to sell it with the console, doing it that way rather than listing it on eBay because then you have to deal with shipping and also eBay fees as well. So you're not going to get the $5 out of it if you sell it that way, whereas if you sell it locally, you can. But more expensive games like this, definitely listing on eBay is a much better option. Next up is an Xbox 360 bundle that I had. It was a white Xbox 360 with the external hard drive that was Final Fantasy, and I think it had 20, maybe 25 games with it. I know there was three Halo games and a bunch of other things. Every console and video games that I sell, by the way, I do test prior to selling, and I've never had a return on something that I sold on Facebook Marketplace or even on eBay, so I take definitely pride in that. I only list things that are working. If the game's not working, I toss it out because it's not worth anything. I only list things and sell things that are 100% working. That way I don't have to deal with routine uh, returns. But for this Xbox here, I only listed it for 100 bucks. Somebody that was about 20, 30 minutes away from me, the other end of the city, wanted it but their vehicle wasn't in working order so they couldn't make the drive and if they were to take a bus they'd have to take two buses to get to me and they didn't want to do that so they offered me $60 to drive it to them so that was a total of $160. Now for me it probably cost me around $10 in gas so still for $150 profit that is still a great deal for me to go and make this sale even though I try to just meet people locally within a five minute radius from me. I didn't mind doing that because they offered me an additional 60 bucks, so that's more money in my pockets making this deal happen, and I was more than happy to go and do it for that reason. Next is five PC games. This was included in a bundle I bought a while ago of video game lots that just had random video games in it. I pulled out all of the PC games that I honestly didn't think were worth much. I listed them for a while slowly reducing my price over time and I listed them for $15 and somebody bought them all. There was five PC games so for $15 they made a great deal. I just wanted to see inventory leaving so I was happy that I was able to make this sale happen. I also sold five PlayStation 2 games that were included I think in a separate lot actually in a PS2 lot that I bought that included two PS2s and a pile of games. This was five PS2 games for $20. Now, honestly, I didn't write down exactly what games there were. I know they picked out, I think, a $5 game and a $10 game, and the rest were just really cheap games that they picked. But for five games, $20, I thought that was still a great sale, in my opinion. Next up, we have the PS3 007 Steelbook James Bond game. Uh, it included the game in Steelbook. Now, this one sold on eBay. 
and it was shipping to the United States and accidentally I didn't charge enough for shipping, but even after shipping and eBay fees, it was still $17 I made profit on this transaction selling it on eBay. So once again, selling video games on eBay depends on the game, but it, for me, if it's over $20 that the game is worth, even after fees, it comes down to about $15. That is still worth selling it on eBay as opposed to trying to sell it locally. So that game there was awesome, $17 profits. Next up was a PS2 fat model that I just talked about a minute ago that I purchased a lot a while back. I sold this PS2 for $50. It included all of the wiring, the console, and one controller. Everything was tested and worked. And this guy was more than happy and he did tell me he was a collector. And in a couple minutes I'll share another thing that he bought for me because he's a return customer. Um, so I did sell that to him for $50, which was great. And that right there meant that whole lot that I bought for, I think 115 and included two PS3s and a pile of games and a few controllers. I've already made back all of my money on that lot. Everything extra is all pure profit, which is awesome. Next is three games that I sold. Now, they're PS3 games, so for on average, if there's nothing too fancy and nothing that's more valuable that I'm obviously gonna sell on eBay, I try to list my PS3 games $5 each and try to take a picture of them all and see who's interested in what. So this included uh, two Bioshock games and Skyrim for $15. I was happy to see stuff sold and people aren't heckling me on the price. So for $5 for a PS3 game is still great. Also, depending on the game, if it's a sports game, you're not gonna get $5 for it. But if it's any other game on average, you'll get about $5 for it, which is great. Then I did sell four PS2 games. I actually had to go into a store and sell it to the manager who's the friend of the person that was actually wanting to buy them, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to make the sale. Now these were cheaper games. For the most part, they were all sports games. So for four PS2 games, I'm charging $10, and that was included in this one. So it was only $10, and I did go above and beyond and go in to meet the friends, uh, the, pers the person that was buying them, their friend who was the manager to make the sale happen. Usually I only meet in the parking lots, but I did make the sale happen, which was great. Then on eBay, I did sell some hockey cards. I've been getting out of hockey cards, like I've said recently on an update video where I'm trying not to even collect hockey cards anymore, but I still have a ton of hockey cards that I'm selling. The $2 packs I've gotten rid of because it's not worth if somebody buys one $2 pack to me even ship that because even after, even if I charge a little bit for shipping, after shipping and fees, it's only about a dollar. It's not even worth my time going to the post office or even trying to ship it. It's not worth the hassle. But for more of my more expensive ones, for the uh, $15 mystery boxes, even after fees and shipping, it equals out to be $10 profit. So I did make $10 on this sale, which was awesome. And the last thing that I've sold was the second PlayStation 2 fat model that I had in that bundle. It included the network adapter. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the hard drive that is usually connected to the um, network adapter. I took it apart, I took the network adapter off, and there's no 40 gigabyte hard drive inside, which would have meant a lot more money. But still, I listed this all together for $80, and the person that bought the other PS2 that I talked about in this video, he returned and bought this one and didn't try to negotiate the price. The other one I had listed for $60, he offered me 50, I took it. This one here I had listed for 80. He didn't even ask for a discount, he took it because he collects them. So that was awesome. He thought, or sorry, he did mention that he wished I did only list the one with the network adapter first, but he was more than happy to have both. And after talking to him, he did say he's interested in buying a PS1 because his is faulty. I said, I do have a PS1 that I am gonna be selling except it doesn't have the optimal drive, the uh, laser, the cable was broken for the CD. When you put the CD in, it can't read CDs uh, or the game, sorry. So he said that's fine. His is working, everything else isn't, so he'll be able to buy it and uh, combine them. So there's gonna be another sale from this guy in the future, it just hasn't happened yet. But for this one here, he paid $80 for this PS2. That was all profit. When he bought the last PS2, that was me breaking even on the entire lot. 
This here is $80 profit, plus I did keep an expensive PS2 game, The Simpsons Hit and Run, which is about a $50 game. I kept that for myself because that's a game from my childhood that I wanted in my collection. So I got to keep that, and I'm at $80 profit, and I still have a bunch of PS2 games as well. And he's going to return and be a return client, and he is going to be buying the PS2 from me, or sorry, the PS1 from me. Now the PS1 I did pay uh, $30 for the lots with a bunch of games. He only wants the PS1 and he's going to pay me $40. So at that, I'm already going to be at $10 profit from it. And I still have a bunch of games to sell as well. So these are my most recent sales. Most of them were from Facebook Marketplace. But for some of the more expensive video games, I do sell them on eBay because it works out better. For anybody that's scared of eBay, yes, there is eBay fees. They're between 12 to 14 percent. Yes, when you sell on eBay, you do have to claim taxes at the end of the year, so you have to keep track of what you pay for your items, what they sell for, what you paid for shipping, to be able to figure out what your taxes are, your expenses, and your income. But you do make money on it, and it is worth it, in my opinion. Even if you're getting taxed on what you're making for a, let's say, 20 to 40 dollar game, selling it on eBay you won't likely get that locally unless it's from a collector. So keep that in mind. But I will leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.